Hello, my name is Casey and today I am going to be doing a oral peripheral exam to determine if there is a any possible structural or functional reason for any oral abnormality abnormalities. So I would put on my gloves first and with my patient I would be checking their face first. So at rest, which is looking at cranial nerve seven, the facial nerve. Um, the function of the facial nerve is facial movement. So I'll be looking at the symmetry of the face to determine if structures look the same. This is important to rule out any potential neurological concerns. I will be checking their expression, any abnormal involuntary, involuntary movement at rest, and any tremors or fasciculations. And next in the exam, I will be looking at their lips, which is also cranial nerve seven, the facial nerve. The function, um, again, is facial movement and um, salivation. I'll be looking at speci specifically for the lips. So uh, for my patient, I would have them pucker their lips like this and <clears throat> say, ooh, and then they would say, e and then both sounds together, so ooh, ee. And by that, I would be looking to see if there are any weaknesses. Then I would ask them to puff out their cheeks and hold like this. And by doing so, I would be seeing if there is any air escaping. If I did have a little mirror, I would hold it under their nose and have them puff their cheeks like this and hold it to see if there is any air escape. Uh, or nasal emission through the velopharyngeal port. Um, I would also be looking if the mirror fogs up or if there's any drooling or facial weakness. Next in the exam, I will be looking at the jaw on my patient, so which is cranial nerve five, the trigeminal nerve, and the function of the trigeminal nerve is jaw movement and sensation. So I'm looking at the jaw just at rest. Are there any abnormal or involuntary movements? Then I would ask my patient, can you move your jaw side to side like this? And I'd be looking if they compensate. I would ask them to open up their jaw and close it like this to determine the range of motion. And then I would have them open their jaw again like so, any popping or grinding, that could be potential TMJ. And then I'd have them open and close their jaw very slowly like so to look at the symmetry again and the speed and duration of those exercises. Then I would be looking at the tongue for uh, my patient next for the oral exam. The tongue is cranial nerve 12, the hypoglossal nerve. The function of the hypoglossal is tongue movement. And I would also be looking at taste as well. So I'm looking at the tongue at rest, um, any symmetry, any ab abnormal or involuntary movements, fasciculations, what's the appearance, the color, the size of the tongue. And if I did have a tongue depressor, this will be my uh, pretend tongue depressor. Um, I would have them stick out their tongue like this, uh, and I would hold it down with the tongue depressor. I would be looking to see if molars are aligned, if there is an overbite, an underbite, um, if they have all of their teeth or not. I would have them raise their tongue up like so, and then have them stick the st tongue straight out to look at protrusion, the opening, the symmetry, the range, the strength, the duration. I would have them bring their tongue to the left and then to the right. Uh, both of those, I would be looking at the strength and duration. And then I would have them push the tongue against the depressor um, to determine their tongue strength. Then I would have them say, la, and repeat after me, la, ka, ka, and then both together, la, ka, la, ka. Now that is checking the anterior posterior movement of the tongue. And I, after all those exercises, I am looking at the strength of the tongue from moving left to right. Um, and when I want to check mobility, I would tell them to move their tongue tip 
up and then down and then rapid movement side to side like so. Then next I would be checking the patient's velo pharynx, which is cranial nerve nine, the glossopharyngeal cranial nerve, which is pharyngeal movement, the pharynx, the tongue, sensation and taste. And it's also looking at cranial nerve 10, the vagus nerve, um, which functions are pharyngeal, palatal and laryngeal movement and pharyngeal sensation. So if I also had a flashlight, I would be checking the view of the oral pharynx, looking at position, symmetry, abnormal involuntary movements. And then I have my patient say, ah, then I'm looking at the symmetry range of motion and duration. And then I would say, can you please sustain S to check nasal airflow? So like so, I would check the tonsils, the color of the palate. Um, I would check to see if the alveolar ridge is it prominent, the height and width of the palate, and are there any growths or fistulas on the palate. And lastly, I will be looking at the patient's larynx, which is cranial nerve 10, the vagus nerve. I will have them um, give me a little cough like this <coughs> to see if maybe there's a glottal coop. Um, I would also check for adequate adduction, abduction. I would look at the uvula. Um, I would say, can you open up and say, ah, uh, does it deviate to the left or the right? Is there hyper or hyponasality? At, um, also saying, ah, uh, I'm checking their soft palate. Is it going up to close the velopharyngeal pore or is it symmetrical? Then I would be checking their gag reflexes, which is cranial nerve nine, the glossopharyngeal nerve. I would look at um, a jaw jerk, which is cranial nerve five, the trigeminal nerve, and then their sucking reflex, reflex, which is cranial nerve five, seven, nine, 10, and 12. And lastly, I would be looking at their respiratory system, which is cranial nerve 10, the vagus nerve. So their posture, quiet breathing, sustained to check nasal airflow. Um, is there, uh, are they a mouth or a nose breather to help determine if there is any velopharyngeal insufficiency and lastly their range. So their abdomen and their thorax. Thank you.